Hey there, my name is Bob. I've been streaming for Own TV since 2017, and now I want to show you how you create your own account on Twitch.tv. So, first thing you do is you go to Twitch.tv, you click on Sign Up in the top right corner, then this little window opens. You need your username, which is Owned Learning. You need your password. You need a birthday. And you need a valid email address. Owned Learning at gmail.com. Afterwards, you simply confirm that you are not a robot and click on Sign Up. And we will get to the next screen. So what happened here was we got an email from Twitch now where we have to confirm our email address. But before we do that, we have to select three or more of our favorite games. So I'm going to choose PUBG, League of Legends, Fortnite. I like Overwatch, Counter-Strike and World of Warcraft. There we go. We click on done. Afterwards, yeah, we simply, oh, nope, don't want to hear that now. We simply want to confirm our email address. Click on verify your email. It says your email address has been successfully validated. So you might have noticed that for this video, we have switched back to our own learning channel and we're going to have a look at the settings menu. So first of all, here is the probably most important tab in your whole settings because this is where you get your stream key. This is the key you have to put into OBS. So there is a connection between OBS and your Twitch account. If you click on stream key, you can go on show key and then you get this warning. Never share your stream key with anyone or show it on stream. Very important. People who have got your stream key can stream to your channel and they can do that whatever they want. Twitch staff, admins or global moderators will never ask you for this information. So please don't get scammed here. Don't get fooled. Just never show your stream key to anyone. If you click on I understand, it shows your stream key. Why am I showing this? Because if I ever happen to show it to someone, I simply can reset it here and it will generate a new stream key. So if you by accident show your stream key, just reset the key, fill in the new one. So will I after I finish this video, of course. The next part of this OBS tutorial is the more technical part, which are our settings. Now we're talking about the stream settings. We can have a list of stream services right here. We can have a custom, custom streaming server. So if you are streaming to a private server, maybe capture it from there and so on. You have a custom streaming server. You can have a list of streaming services here. So those are the most important ones. But if I go and show all services and hit the button here, those are all that are available. We are streaming to Twitch. Then we have to choose a server. I would recommend having this on auto. As you see, you can choose a specific server. And you usually want to choose the one that's the nearest to you. But if it doesn't make any problems, have it on auto. And this is your stream key. So we have shown this where we have shown where you get your stream key on an earlier tutorial. This is where you would copy in your stream key and then it would appear like something like this. I just typed something in here. If you click on show, it says the stream key right here. So this is where you have to copy it in and then hit apply. And that's your connect. That's a connection between OBS and your Twitch account. So to enter your dashboard, you click on the arrow in the top right corner and you click on dashboard. And then we get right in the first tab we're going to talk about, which is the live tab. There it is. So we have all the 
news. Okay, we just keep that away. That's what you usually see. Good. So you have many different tabs and just a quick ninja tip, you can move them around as you wish to have them in order. So those are all can be readjusted by drag and drop. The first one are announcements. So if you made an announcement, you can show them right here or you see them right here. This is your upcoming announcement and so on. Not that important in my opinion, but if you use the, the function a lot, why not have it open? This is a more important tab here. It's the stream information. So you can edit your stream title, like old learning is here, for example. Then you can have a different go live notification. So what is a go live notifications? People can have notifications for your stream. We talked about it via mail, via browser and on their phone. And this is what they will get. So if I have owned learning teaches you something now, this is the message they will see on their phone or they will get via mail or they see in their browser and so on. You don't have to have this, but it's neat to have it sometimes. You can change the game here. We're playing Fortnite this, oops. Fortnite this time and we can add ourselves to communities or actually get out of communities. Let's say we are not in the PUBG now, we are into Fortnite and we enter the Fortnite, what is it called? Fortnite Battle Royale community. We can restrict our chat language here. So if we have this, people get a pop-up when they want to write in chat which tells them that this chat is in English and they should keep to English because the chat language is set to English. You can set your language to all the different languages here. But we don't want it right now because if somebody writes in German because they know we are from, from Germany then it's fine for us as well. I mean it does not keep them from writing in a different language. It just reminds them that it is like that. At the end, we have to hit update information. It says updated and now all this information is in our stream. Down here, we see our stream health. So when you go live, you see that you're live here and how good your stream is working. If, if everything's fine, this is going to be green and sometimes you have to make some adjustments because your bitrate is too high or your keyframe interval is too high or too low and so on. And it will tell you information down here and sometimes it also tells you what you have to change. There's also the Twitch inspector where you get further details on that. We can see our channel feed here as well. So we were talking about that earlier that you have kind of a feed for your channel where you can post messages and that's the stuff we have already posted so if you want to have like a quick update because you have this great clip and you want to put it into your channel feed you can do this via the live dashboard so i don't know if i said it already but it's called live dashboard because people do like to have it up when they are live because it gives an overview over all the important information you need those are the extensions you have installed so we have the viewer geolocation extension and our single viewer, which is me, is coming from Austria. If you have more extensions, you can choose them here. And we see the video preview. It's nothing happening here, but this is basically your stream. You will see your stream in here. I do like that in the beginning when I want to know if I'm actually, if everything's working, if I'm live if there's nothing wrong with my stream key and so on. I do watch here for my video preview. Then I usually have it on pause because I don't like getting distracted by another video running when I'm streaming. But some people I think will have it up all the time maybe. It's however you like it. And if somebody tells me, hey, your stream is stuttering, I turn it on again to actually see if my stream is really stuttering or if it's only on their end. It's always a bit of a tricky thing to find out if somebody says hey my stream is stuttering well is it on my end is the problem on my end or is it on your end and you can check it here basically then you get 
all the stats. So now we are offline, it doesn't show anything, but this is the people which are viewing or your viewer account right now. You see how long you've been streaming already, how many clips have been created in this stream. You see how many views you've gotten over the lifetime of your channel. So this is not something while you're live, this is in general and your followers. So this channel has one follower. If you, for example, don't want to see a few account, a lot of people don't like seeing how many people are watching them because they don't want to change when there are a lot of people in there and they also don't want to be any, any different when there is nobody in there. So you can always hide them. You have to hover over to view them. You can also hide all of them actually. So for me, like all of these are fine, but I do not like seeing my viewer account for the exact reason I said before. Like I don't want to be any different when nobody is in here than I am when a lot of people are in my chat. Then we have our host options here. We can also manage auto hosting and snooze auto hosting here. We've talked about hosting and auto hosting in a chapter before already. Then we see who is hosting me. And who is auto hosting me? So those are just an information. If you maybe missed the host or something, you can look it up here as well. Who is hosting me and who, who is auto hosting me here? We can have a look at our video broadcasts. So the reruns is like we can play a past stream of ours. We can play them again. And then we see like which ones are scheduled here and so on. There we go, we can add videos here. So maybe we wanna replay the, our stream from Monday to Thursday and then we put them in here and they get played one after the other. Premiers, we're gonna have a look at in a few chapters when we get to the video producer. So we're not gonna go into that right now. And then we have our chat here and this is probably the most important tab you want to look at. You never want to have this folded in unless you have popped out your chat. That's something different. But so you can see those are our chat rules and you have to click OK and hi everyone. Everyone. There we go. Had to join the chat room first. So we see this is the live chat we got here. If somebody's responding, we know he or she is in our chat. We can have different rooms. As you see, we have a room for our mods here. So for all our moderators to be in and for our subs. And we can create new ones. That's what we did here. We can have this as test chat. And then we can set restrictions. So can everybody enter this chat? Or can it only be the mods? Or can it only be the subs? Or can we only allow others to read but not send messages? You have to set those restrictions here in order to get the chat you want to. I feel like it's a good idea to have a mod chat and a sub chat. Those are the things that work for me here. And the stream chat, of course, that's the chat where everybody can write in your stream. You have your emojis down here, all the Twitch emojis, a lot of good ones. Let's go to Twitch Unity. Then we can see our viewer list. So this is the list. It usually takes quite a bit to load and sometimes it doesn't work, but this is the list where you see who is in your chat right now. You can also filter the viewers, but I would not recommend like calling out somebody who is in your chat but not writing. Those people are called lurkers. There are people on Twitch who simply want to watch but don't write. And don't make the mistake to go into your viewer list and call them all out. Because I'm a notorious lurker and if somebody calls me out, chances are really, really high that I'll be gone in the next second. Because those are people who love gaming while watching streams or maybe they are in bed. People watch streams when they are in bed and trying to sleep and you're calling them out. Like, yeah, it's just rude, I think. It's a no-go on Twitch. We're talking about this later on as well, again, when we go into the netiquette on Twitch. So you see our moderators own learning, which is me and stream elements, our bot is in here. And if there are more people watching you, you will have a whole list in here. You can also filter them. Let's say somebody says, wow, there is, I don't know, a big streamer 
in your stream, then you could like check it by typing in a uh, big streamer. Oh, a big streamer isn't here. Somebody was trolling. I think you get what I mean here. Then we can also have the chat options here. We can edit our appearance. There we go. We can have a different color. If we go on more colors, oops, there we go. We get to the Twitch Prime, no, not Twitch Prime, Twitch Turbo subscription. So it's basically um, a payment account or paid account on Twitch where you get ad free experience, you get custom emote set, you get the Turbo Chat badge, which is the battery here. Then you can extend chat colors and increase your video storage. If you want that, it's fine. I actually never had it. But you see it's $8.99 per month, $24.99 for three months, and so on. So you have to decide what you want here. There we go. We're back at our dashboard. And let's go through the other options real quick. We can have timestamps. Oh, um, hi. There we go. Now it shows the time on when something got posted. Really neat if there isn't that much chat interaction here so you can see okay have i missed this message or is it did it just come in so if you get distracted for a second you can hide your chat showing it again we can also pop out chat so it gets in a separate window that's what i like to do i usually have it in a separate window open and i can make it bigger as well and so on we can have the mod icons on we can have a follower only chat, which I would not recommend, but if you get trolled or something, put it on. So must have followed for 30 minutes. If this option is on, you must have followed for at least 30 minutes before you can write. We can have a slow mode. So people can only write a message every three or 30 seconds, I think. This is just for big chats. It's usually used at events, so it doesn't get too spammy. You can show your moderation actions. If somebody gets timeouted or gets banned, you will see that in chat. Then you see the message is called by auto mod. We've talked about the auto mod earlier and you see what the auto mod is doing. You can watch your recent rates. So we didn't get any recent rates. We can manage our rate settings here. And we can clear our chat. Give me a second. Test one two three there we go oops that was wrong that's the right button if we clear our chat it's gone like it deletes the whole chat if somebody writes a lot of mean things clear the chat ban the guy it's done all right those are the most important things we can see in our live dashboard just think about if you want to have it on if you're live i think it's really neat because it shows the most important things as I said, if it's like too much for you, you can always hide the things you don't really need here.